Oh, what's that? New Hoyas. Oh, no. I had to throw the box at myself. Hello, my name is Miro and welcome to a Hoya haul. It's been a while since we did this. These are Hoyas that are sent to me from Betsy. You all know her, Betsy Begonia. And these are the Hoyas. A lot of these Hoyas I ordered last year and they were sort of staying at her place because last year it was, I mean, nothing really changed. There was, there was a heat wave and she couldn't send them to me. And I sort of was like, you know, it's not urgent. I have a lot of Hoyas anyway. And she sent them now because as you know, she closed down her shop and she just wanted to get all the packages out and she sent this to me. And unfortunately there was a heat wave this time as well. It was 40 degrees of Celsius, which is like 100 and something of Fahrenheit, 105, maybe 104. So it was quite toasty. I do hope that the plants are alive. They were sent from France on Monday and they went to Hungary and then they were hand carried to me. And essentially like through those countries, France, Austria, Germany, everything up, up until Hungary, there is no heat wave, but in Hungary there was a heat wave. So I do hope that they are okay. Um, after that, they were also in a car with an AC, so they should be fine, but I'm not sure. We're gonna see now. Uh, I think there are about 18 Hoyas in here. I'm not really sure how many I purchased. I purchased them from Patricia from Poland and uh, there are some that Betsy sent me as a gift. We're just gonna dive right into this box without much further ado, which is quite shocking for this channel considering that I never shut up. I think most of these are cuttings. I told her to send me cuttings and to keep the bases of my plants because I'm going to reroot them anyways because Betsy grows in pond. I no longer do, as you know. Let's actually attempt to find my scalpel because I can't get into that fast enough. Crisis averted, I found the scalpel. Oh yeah, that's the good cutting. I'm going to be saving all the packaging material. So this is what they look like. I hope she wrote IDs because I'm not really sure that I will be able to recognize all of them, but I think she did because she always does. So the first out of many wrapped up Hoyas. They don't feel warm to the touch, so it should be fine. Oh my goodness, they look good. Oh, you're my new love. Sorry, I'm like totally looking at this without actually telling you. So let's begin with the first one. It is a Carnosa. And this is Hoya Carnosa Mar Marla Marlia Marley. These are most likely all going to be rooted in cocoa husk, but we shall see. So this is a Carnosa. It has curved, variegated, not curved, curly variegated leaves. I honestly got this one to just fill out my Carnosa collection. It reminds me the curls a bit of compacta, but they're not such tight curls at all. It is an interesting specimen. I don't know much about the history of her Carnosa Marla, or I do, but I forgot, which is the same as not actually knowing. Very cute. I think this would look very nice as a hanging plant, but I don't know if I will be able to do that. I'm not going to take these off because I'm not really sure when I'm going to be able to pot them today. And it's very hot, so let's, you know, allow them to stay as moist, as long, as long moist as they can. English language has not appeared with me today. This is Hoya Rigrifolia Splash. I got this from Patricia, I believe. And my Rigrifolia croaked, but it's okay because she was ugly anyway. One of the newer leaves here is going to fall off. I do like Hoya Rigitifolia quite a lot. I am a bit sad that mine croaked, but mine has been struggling for the longest time. So at the same time, I'm also happy that she went. You know, it's not supposed to be a difficult plant. I just think mine, you know, sometimes you, you get a cutting and it's not the happiest cutting. This one is actually very nice. I prefer this anyway. 
because who doesn't want to have a splash? So it's those very characteristic rigidifolia leaves plus splash on them. And if you ask me, that is a win-win situation. Now this one is Affinity Clemenciorum, also from Patricia. I told Betsy, I don't really like this plant. I, when I bought it last year, I still liked Hoyas that have veiny leaves. And I do agree, like when she sent me photos as the plant was growing, it's like nice. I get it, it's nice. But at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I do like it. You can see it here. But is it going to become my favorite Hoya? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe it will, who knows? I often say that it's not and then it does. It might grow better than my Clemenciorum that I have. It's very nice in the back too. I actually might like the back more than the front. Now the next one is what excites me. This is still called Hoya Bonnie, and I've been looking for this plant for some time. And Hoya Bonnie could be reclassified at one point as Carnosa, I don't know. But it is Bonnie for now, and it sort of has these heart-shaped leaves, very Carnosa reminiscent. You can see what that looks like. This is from Patricia. Very nice dark foliage. That one is a bit weird, but I think if it wasn't, it would be the most perfect leaf ever. And the reason why I got this one is because of the foliage. I really like the heart-shaped leaf foliage. Here, these two maybe are not so... I mean, they're not at all heart-shaped. They're still nice, but it is supposed to be very heart-shaped, from the specimens, at least, that I saw online. So we will see how that will grow. I'm curious to see in my conditions what these leaves will look like because they often change, you know, from condition to condition. So I hope that here they're going to be really, really heart shaped, even though we like all leaves, but that is what we were going for. And I think, think it does bloom very similar to Hoya Carnosa. We got to move fast. I have a lot of work to do today. Okay, this second batch also appears to look good. Okay, so I don't know what this is. Papua Hoya species Wamina. Ooh, ooh, what? Oh, wow. Oh, yum. Mm. Okay, let's show you the thin-leaved species of Hoya. I got Papua Hoya, where are you? Where's the beginning? Papua Hoya species of Wamina. I do have to look up what that is. I'm not really sure what types of flower does this one have. A lot of the Papua Hoyas have that, st I mean, all of the Hoyas have star-shaped flower, but you know, kind of like octopusy flower. And I don't know right now what the, the flowers of these one look like. I didn't buy this. This was a gift from Betsy. I do see it is a thin-leaved species with slightly fuzzy leaves. I do like the leaves. This could be a candidate for my Rotsta terrarium. If I can open the bag. Ooh, very nice. Ooh, I like it. <gasps> Yum. So the foliage is nice, dark, and fuzzy. I like it. Look at it. I really like Hoyas with sort of this planar foliage. I much, much, much prefer these than any Callistophila, Clemenciorum. I'm so sorry. I have evolved. I am better than everyone now because I like the planar looking leaves. Next one is what Ashken Ashkenanthoides. And I, to be quite honest with you, I did not know that Hoa Eschkenainthoides has such big leaves. I really thought that Hoa Eschkenainthoides has small leaves, but this is not small at all. Adorable. I thought this was going to be a terrarium candidate, but probably not, because the leaves are much too big. Far too big. Oh, but they're gorgeous. Honey. Honey. Girl. Look at that. Also fuzzy. Oh my goodness. I love her. I already love her. 
and they see love at first sight as unreal. Clearly, those people do not collect Hoyas. This one, I'm very, very happy to have this one. This is Philanthera species Mentawai. Philanthera, similar to Hoya. I think they're cousins, but better blooms. I'm gonna say it, better blooms. And I think this one should not be that difficult to bloom. Leaves are also very interesting. The leaves are thin, but not super thin. They're thicker than you would expect. They sort of have that Fusca vibe, Hoya Fusca, and very interesting. I actually quite like this a lot. I think this one could be a terrarium candidate because I think this is like the max size. Then again, I will probably put Ashkenanthoides there as well, or maybe I will just make two. I should make two. Okay, look at that. Oh, love of my life. You can see the veining there. And if, even, even if I remove my hand and then you can kind of see it through it. What an interesting leaf. And it's really not that thin. I can't explain to you the thickness of the leaf. It's not that thin. It's not like Apoda or Evelinae, Paradisa. It's thicker than all of those. Exilis, thicker than all of those. But still a thin-leaved Hoya, definitely. Or not a Hoya, it's a Philanthera. I am super excited. I was afraid that these are not going to arrive well. Another Hoya species, Jabar. And I can't remember what type of flower this one has. I am excited to have this one. And this should be an early bloomer. So this one could go into the ter terrarium. I love how I have like already 30 begonias in that ter terrarium. And I'm like putting all of these Hoyas in the terrarium as well. But I think this one would look nice. As you know, I love Hoya amicabilis and this has Hoya amicabilis vibes. Oh, it is so pretty. I will just never get over these leaves. These are potentially one of my favorite leaves. I really like that central vein. I like the thickness. I like the growth pattern of these Hoyas. And it's just dark foliage with splash. Very, very amicabilis-like, but I do love Hoya amicabilis. I know that a lot of people don't, but I just think that is a very, very nice leaf. It's really a subtle beauty. It's subtle beauty. I'm so wise today. I don't need any more Hoyas after this. <laughs> Watch me in my next haul in a month. This is Lacunosa White Pearl. I do have to admit that when I saw White Pearl online, it did look different than this. This one, it reminds me of another Lacunosa that I have, but we'll see how it grows. I don't know, do you have a Lacunosa White Pearl? Let me know, because I thought it was supposed to be all silver and elongated leaves, but maybe I'm wrong. This reminds me a lot of snow caps, but snow caps is smaller leaves, so I'm not entirely sure. Pretty though, very, very pretty. I do like it. And who doesn't want another Lacunosa in their collection, right? Oof. Was ist das? Oh, we have two more, okay. Something big and something smaller. Let's do the big, let's do the big. So far, excellent. All right, so we have a Hoya here that I got last year from Natalie Simonson. And unfortunately my Hoya didn't make it. It is a Hoya Piestolepis. It is the third clone. Oh, wait, I thought she forgot to send me this one. Wait, I'm gonna open the last package. She forgot to send me two, one Carnosa. Oh, okay. I think she maybe just mislabeled this because I think she told me that this is a Desiantha. I will have to check. I will tell you the name, but... So this is Hoya Piestolepis NS10057. This one is supposed to have the darkest flowers. A lot of people tell me there is a difference in the leaves. I honestly do not see the difference. To me, all of the Piestolepis look the same. Am I wrong? I just do not see the difference. It does not look any different than my other two Piestolepis. And I have the NS16002 uh, and NS16002. 
11, 0, 9, 6. To me, they all just look the same. I don't know. I guess I'll have to bloom them all and confirm the identities. It is possible that I don't have all three. I could have like one three times. Oh boy. Okay, so this is... She wrote Hoya Species Viet Cast, IML1658, but I think that's the one that she forgot to send me. I think this is a Hoya de Siantha from Vietnam because she told me she ordered this one from Olga, who is a Hoya collector in Germany, and she got it as a gift because I adore this plant. And I really, really wanted it, but it was very expensive. So I think she got it for me. Instead, I got Viet Cast because that one looked similar. But I think she ended up sending the Desiantha and wrote Viet Cast. I think that's what happened. And then there is a Carnosa Snowball there that's still with Betsy. But anyway, and the other one is Hoya Inflata. And I did not know that Hoya Inflata looks like this. I've been wanting Hoya Inflata for a very long time. It is a, like Pistolepis, but shorter. It really looks like Pistolepis leaf. I love it. If I knew it was look, it was like this, I would have gotten it sooner. When I wanted to get Hoya in Plata for the first time, it was unnaturally expensive, obnoxiously expensive. Now it is cheaper, but it's still not by any stretch of imagination cheap, to my knowledge. It is very beautiful, and I'm so happy to have it. So thank you so much for this. Hoya Inflata has beautiful blooms, and I hope that this is one of the Hoyas that I will get to bloom very fast. I'm really surprised by the leaves. I never looked at the leaves of Hoya Inflata, but I thought it was a thin-leaved Hoya. And this is the other one, which I will ask her, but I do believe that this is a uh, Desiantha from Vietnam. If I'm wrong, I will write a name that is correct. It does have a peduncle here with buds. But we'll see if that will actually make it. I mean, hello. It can also get much, much nicer leaves. I will insert a photo of Olga's plant, which is essentially why I wanted it. So we'll just see how it will grow in my conditions. But it should get very prominent veining as well. This is Hoya Fusca, and I just got another one, but the other one looks very different. Yeah, this one just looks very, very different than the other one. Hmm, that is interesting. I will root it and grow both of these out. This is the one that I wanted. This is the vibe of the leaf that I wanted. They're supposed to be a bit flatter, but you can see if I turn it, you can kind of see the nurture there. And gosh, I have a lot of hair to root, don't I? I do I have a box? I don't think I have a box. This is her Carnosa outer variegated that I think hails from AH Hoya. She told me, Betsy told me that some of the leaves are damaged, but they stay small. And they're damaged because of the light. So they call it Hoya Carnosa outer variegated mini leaves. So it's bigger than Juliana, but not super big. It's cute. It's very nice, very cute. I think in uh, higher light, maybe it will be even smaller. I can't remember if Betsy told me if she grew this in lower light or higher light, but she did say that leaves do stay consistent. So that's nice to hear. The next one is something that I ordered from Hoya Passion last year, and it's a Hoya Pink Alex. Pink Alex is supposed to be a cross with Fungi. And now you see there is Pink Alex Splash, but this is honestly splashy AF as heck. I love it. And I think it's called Pink Alex because it's supposed to bloom pink. It is gorgeous. Instant love. Instant love. Look at that. So, so nice. So it's not entirely a carnosa leaf. Carnosas don't have leaves like that. So it is like a fungi, but smaller. 
Probably in lower light they will get uh, bigger. I think that Betsy does grow her in Radsta cabinet with light, lights pretty close to it, which is surprising to me because I, from my experience, preserving splash and highlight hasn't been a success. But maybe with this one, who knows? I will definitely try to grow it out on top of my cabinet, most likely, where the rest of the Carnosa, Fungi, Desianta, Nutans, and we will see how she will do. I will add an additional light above those, but we'll see. I do believe this is the last one, right? This is Hoya Lacunosa Leopard Skin. Who doesn't need another Lacunosa, right? I don't, I don't. It's like, who doesn't need another Carnosa or Fungi? You, Miro, you. That's who, you. So Leopard Skin, very pretty very splashy they're all different than the than what is uh, traded as lacunosa splash i can see the difference for sure um i don't think these are registered cultivars white pearl was it and uh leopard skin so i would say these are trade names just like crimson queen crimson princess those are registered as rubra and tricolor but Crimson Queen Princes are trade names, and I do believe Leopard Skin is as well. Very, oh, it has a peduncle, but it's yellow. Very cute. Now, does that look like a skin of a leopard? I don't know. Haven't met one in a long time, or ever, really. But it is a very nice, very splashy, and it's a Lacunosa, so we got a love. I have work to do. I have so many things to do. I did not expect. I mean, she did tell me what she's going to send, but I sort of forgot because I was really not hoping that they're going to live. I kind of gave up when I saw the temperatures, but they, oh, they're falling out of the bags. They all made it. I'm just so happy that these arrived in such great health. I can't believe it, honestly. It was so hot, but they're not even dehydrated. So apparently luck was on my side th this week because again, I have another package that arrived in extreme heat and I do have one more, but that's not a Hoya. We ordered an Anthurium. <laughs> Someone needs to chill. Someone needs to chill the F down. Is it me? No. Oh my goodness, what shall I do? I think it's time for me to say goodbye and sort of deal with these. First thing that I will do is I will bag them. I will keep them away from my AC. I don't have time to pot them right away, but they should be fine. Leave your thoughts below, positive thoughts and comments. Which one is your favorite? I'm really taken aback by how beautiful Eschkenanthoidus is. Gotta learn that name a little bit better. I will see you soon in the next video. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy your Hoyas. Don't order when it's too hot. Don't do this. Don't do this. I mean, I didn't. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me today. See you soon. Gotta go pot these. We'll keep you updated on how they root and how they grow. As you know, where will I put them? I don't know. I was just thinking the other day, maybe I can take down one of the tents. Downsize. Down... Clearly someone needs to send me a dictionary because this is not downsizing, is it? All right, see you next time. Bye-bye. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My two anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, and Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Betsy Brett Noble, Karen Candy Tapped, Catherine Molina, Christy Claire Cola, Daniela Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Deborah Violet, Deli Heredia, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Ethan W., Erin Keenan, Eleni Sachs, and Ellen M. Mortal, Farah, Gathering Moss, Gina Geisig, Go Green Tropical, Gross, it's Kyle. Heather Uppingham, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Jonas Barry, Hjord Larsen, Jovan Denoth, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Lisa Mary, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmolich, Mars B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Mo Edmund, Nelly Yang, Nihabasu, Nicole Maroni, Nanguin, Nita Macy, Odette Brooks, 
Rock, BJ Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Sophia Rian, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy Rossman, Zenia Green, Youth of the Volumuth, Zaira Rivera, Zordarama, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Kilon Constance, Daryl De Rosario, Eden C, Catherine Parsons, Kent Brown, L. Lindbergh, Lindsay Ann, Mary H, Monica Weikers, Nella, Sykes Zera, Renee Church, Ringlop Tang, Watanas Riakul, and Wendy Foreman. And a thank you to my $1 patrons one anonymous patron, Alice Borolin, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Jamie Arsenault, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren, Lauren M, Lorianne Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Nerdy Cathy, Olivia Chinuller, Sarah, and Tracy the Eyebriller.